I have two readings for us this morning. If you've looked at your bulletin, you realize that this is the week of the parents. And uh, for our family situation, we are looking at mom and dad. I'm reading first from the book of Luke, chapter 1, 26 to 38. Maybe a little bit different if you're following along. I'm using the new revised standard. Hear the words of Luke this morning. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was set by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord's with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And, in, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Well, Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I'm a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And, he, and therefore, the child will be born with all the holiness, and he will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who is said to be barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Here I am. Servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. And now this morning we turn to the Father and we take a look at Joseph. I'm reading Matthew chapter 1, 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the Virgin Mary shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Well, when Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. I begin the sermon this morning with a song. Did you know that your baby boy would someday walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy 
would save our sons and daughters. Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you've delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm a storm with his hands? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you've kissed your little baby, then you've kissed the face of God. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. The lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know? That your baby boy is Lord of all creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nation? Did you know that your baby boy was heaven's perfect lamb? This child, the sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. Who wants to preach after that? That indeed was the sermon. Ellie. No words, girl. Thank you. And so in keeping with this tradition this morning, I would like to uh, not use my words, but the words of a longtime colleague of mine, uh, Reverend Dr. Walt Wangren, who uh, years ago, uh, I wanted to say, personalized the event of the ordinary parents becoming not so ordinary as they came to grips with actually uh, conceiving and bearing and raising the Son of God. So I'm going to ask you to join me and hear the words of the gospel through the eyes of Walt Wangren. The houses of Nazareth were built on steep sides of a hill that faced east and southeast they received the morning sunlight. The soil, too, was good for growing vines and vegetables. The weather was kind because of the hill's protection, and the rainfall was generous. But there was only one spring of water in the entire village, so Nazareth always remained small. Those who lived there knew one another very, very well. Six months after her betrothal to Joseph, in the spring of the year, when the rains had passed and the ground was green, Mary sought a little privacy by climbing the slopes above the village. She had not been truly alone since the betrothal, and she felt sad, yes, and at the same time happy, excited, but scared. Suddenly, a hand seized her shoulder in a very strong grip, and in the same instant, thunder crashed her ear. But there was no one there. No one. Not a person. No, no hand. Only a dazzling pillar of light. The voice said, Don't be afraid, Mary, for you found favor with God. You'll be with child and give birth to a son and are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and he will be called Son of the Most High. Mary said, but I'm unworthy. I have many faults. 
I've rebelled against my parents. I often envy my cousins. I'm not even married. How can this be? The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, child, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Mary, for nothing is impossible with God. Well, she had not dreamed it. The finger of God had touched her. The presence of God had consumed her and kindled life within her. God had seen fit to grip her flesh and give it substance. Purely human symptoms that would soon be evident to all eyes. Her parents, Joseph, his people. She thought to herself, is this real? How can this be happening to me? Why out of all the women in Galilee would God himself choose me? I can't tell anyone this. Who would believe me? But soon my own body will betray me, and everyone will know. Joseph will be disgraced. Surely he won't have me then. Yet I sense the hand of God on me. Surely if he has chosen me of all people in Nazareth, he will not abandon me. God, most holy and worthy God, help me to be worthy of this thing you've done to me and these others who are so dear to me when the time comes that they must know. Help them to understand. Don't let them cast me out, my God. A not-so-ordinary woman anymore a not-so-ordinary 13-year-old girl. And now we go to Joseph. Now Joseph was a hard-working man, given rather more to being stable than to being passionate. And lately, his days had purpose and a schedule. He saw Mary often, and he himself had grown confident in Mary's love. He thought to himself, she's young, and she's smart, and she's beautiful. And I honestly feel more comfortable around her now that we're betrothed officially. And I'll feel even more comfortable still this summer when we can live as husband and wife. Well, in the spring of the year, three weeks after Joseph had began his work on their house, Mary suddenly wasn't there. For three days, Joseph waited and waited for her, but she didn't appear. And he felt her absence terribly. Is Mary avoiding me? Maybe I've offended her somehow. I've been working late into the evening to make us a good home. Maybe she's changed her mind. What have I done? Well, Joseph was late that evening. He had wanted to finish off a batch of mortar that he'd made before it set. He hurried home to wash and draw on clean garments. And as he approached the garden, he found Mary sitting strangely and quietly. Joseph, there's, there's something I must tell you. I'm with child. Numb with astonishment, he could only gaze at her for what seemed an eternity. And then he spoke one word. Whose? The angel of the Lord God himself came unto me and told me that I was to be the one, the chosen one, Joseph, the one whose body was to carry the Christ child. I couldn't believe it. I dared not believe it, Joseph. I was dazed. I told myself, surely it must have been a dream, or, or I must be going mad. Joseph asked her, the Christ, the one who's been expected so long? The Messiah? You don't believe me. 
for all your reading of the scriptures and your voice in the synagogue? You don't believe me, Joseph? Mary, I do believe. I believe that God will keep his promise. The Christ will come to us one day, but not now, Joseph. Not to us in our time, in our town, to us, to our neighbors, to you and me. Mary, it isn't safe to trust ourselves too much to such beliefs. You've seen them yourself, those zealots and false prophets. As for the women who've imagined themselves to be the chosen ones, as you say, Joseph, I'm with child. Mary, let it not be. Let this thing not be. Surely the God has chosen you for such an honor would not let such a fate befall you. Joseph, Joseph, help me. Have, have pity on me. Well, Joseph reeled out into the darkness of the night, hoping to fall and numb himself so that he would never wake up from this terrible dream. But he must go on, gossiping tongues, however forsaken and bereaved and humiliated a man's honor and the honor of his family was involved. God, whose child, whose child, I should pray. I can't. God's making a spectacle of me. If it were the child of some earthly rival, then in all decency, I ought to set her free to marry him. But if it were indeed divine, how much less she belongs to me. Her home would be in the holy city, her domain the very temple. Pray, you pitiful fool. Exhausted, comforted, but confused, yet knowing what needed to be done, Joseph was resigned in his decision to divorce Mary. But while he was sleeping, the voice of an angel said to him in a dream, Oh, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what, is she, what she has conceived is in her from the Holy Spirit, a divine happening. She will give birth to a son, and you, Joseph, are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Well, my friends, what happened after that moment, Joseph was re really never quite sure. He only knew that suddenly it was dawn and that the prophecy was to be fulfilled. So they began together to make preparations, Joseph finishing the roof and keeping busy with his hands focusing his mind on his work, trying desperately to avoid thinking about the coming event even night and day. Mary began to prepare for the child that would soon come into their home and into their lives. Oh, there were good days, filled with excitement in the house and anticipation of a baby. But don't be fooled. There were also days when doubt crept in, and privately, each of them continued to struggle. Am I ready to be a mother? How do I prepare to be the father on earth of the Son of God? Well, an ordinary couple, he probably 17 or 18 years old, she, probably 12 or 13 years old, they lived in a very small town. And as scripture said, they knew each other very well. An ordinary family betrothed in the Jewish tradition to become husband and wife. And then a very extraordinary event happened. And by God, their lives were changed forever. My friends, that's what Advent is about. That's what God can do to an ordinary family, an ordinary couple, 
an ordinary village. And just like today, some in the village will believe, and some in the family will believe. And others just can't wrap their head around how powerful your God of ancient scripture and presence today can change, yes, yours and my life on a very ordinary day. To God be all the glory this Advent season as he works with your families, whatever they look like, to honor him and walk in his grace. Because my friends, grace is all each one of you need to be bigger and better and more loving than we are because of the baby Jesus.